Today we've got a crazy entitled parent story of a mom who thinks their kid owes them time. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, Entitled Mother snatches my phone out of my hand because I wouldn't let her son play games on it. I didn't know they made those in Canada, too. For context, I'm a young university student. I have two phones, one of which is an old Huawei model that I use for school and work. It's quite slow, but has all my authenticator apps for school, years of notes, the email I use for work and my work number on it. It runs okay-ish well, but is horrible in terms of processing speed and storage. Yet I'm a lazy crap and keep putting off transferring all the data to make my future self's life easier. My second phone, on the other hand, is a newer iPhone 14 Pro Max model, and it has all my games, friend contacts, social media, etc. on them. This occurred back when classes were still in session, but reading all these stories jotted my memory, and now I finally have time to share it too. Everything is still so vividly detailed in my head that I basically can't get it out since everything was so absurd. Anyways, on to the story. On to the bus I go, a normal ride for me, which I take every day. I take two connections. One, which is an express bus from the university to a SkyTrain station, and the second from the SkyTrain station to the home. The second bus is where I encounter this entitled parent. I sit down at the back of the bus where I always sit, and a woman who's on her phone and talking very loudly gets on the bus with a noisy kid, who is screaming and crying and throwing a hissy fit for god knows why. I sigh, realize it's going to be one of those rides, and try to ignore the commotion. Little did I know, the little one has climbed up next to my seat and staring at my screen, while her mother is nearly five seats away, still in heated conversation about god knows what. Out of nowhere I hear a, do you have any games on your phone? I spin around and there he is. This little kid, perhaps seven or eight, is gazing deep into my soul, on his knees on the seat, and inches from my face. I lean back because, well, I don't function well with people up in my face, and this kid leans closer. Foolishly, I reply, yeah, can I play on it? I say, no, go away. They say, but I'm bored. I reply, I don't care, go away. The kid pouts and runs off. I thought that was the end of it. Then a shadow looms over me. I hear an ahem, then again. I try to ignore it, but it was like an unskippable boss fight cutscene. Then out of the corner of my ear, young man, I look up, great, it's the crazy lady. I say, yeah? Why did you tell my son he couldn't use your phone? I say, because it's my phone? You kids are always glued to the screen these days, you can do without it for a single bus ride. At this point, I am stunned, so I don't respond for a few seconds, then slowly reply, what I do with my phone is none of your business. This lady recoils in shock and anger as if I just buried a puppy alive. How dare you talk to me like that? Show some respect. She then sees my second phone, my work phone, and says, You have two phones, just give them one, you can use the other one. I say, no lady, I'm not giving some stranger's kid my phone. She says, but you don't need two phones. Lady, I was annoyed at this point and my tone was starting to get aggressive. It doesn't matter that I have two phones, they are my phones. I won't be giving them to your son, no means no. She rolls her eyes and walks away, her son screaming and clutching the leg of her pants. I tune out the commotion once more, stricken with disbelief and still wondering what in the world just happened. Open up some offline games to decompress. I thought that was the end of everything. How foolish I was. I feel a tug on my backpack as I zone out. I instinctively look for my screen, and this little piece of crap is under the seat, reaching into my bag, trying to pull out my second phone. I panic, smack his hand away, and shout, what the freak are you doing? Now, I'm a normally very calm and reserved person. However, having served six full years in the Royal Canadian Army Cadets, and currently being a drill instructor, my voice was loud when I wanted it to be. The kid winces and cowers, freezing for a solid moment before crawling out from under the seat and runs to his mother crying. I sigh to myself, yep, she's back. Before the kid even reaches her, she's up and storming over. How dare you speak to my son like that? I said your son tried to steal my phone. She says, let him have it, stop being a brat, you can stay off your phone for a moment. It's not that big of a deal. I was seething with rage, boiling with anger. Without skipping a beat, I spat back, well, if it's not such a big deal, how about you let him have yours? That way, you can keep an eye on your little precious angel and start being a responsible parent for once. Your kid being bored is not my responsibility. 
She turned red and demanded, are you calling me a bad parent? And I responded with, if you were such a good parent, your kid wouldn't be off trying to steal other people's stuff. Now our shouting match had drawn quite a commotion. I had heard a few oohs and dangs from the back of the bus. She grew visibly red and snatched my phone from my hand. Not my work phone, the one in my hand. She said, give me that, you brats don't deserve these. I was stunned for a second that she actually did something so incomprehensibly stupid. Looking back, I knew I should have done something better, but I sprang up, wrestled my phone from her grasp and knocked her down in the process. Crap hits the fan. She starts wailing like a banshee screaming that I assaulted her. Her son is crying and he's punching me in the legs. The bus screeches to a halt and the driver comes running up. Now seeing the situation, me towering over the screeching mother and holding a phone, he assumes that I was the perpetrator. This is quite a long bus joined together with two sections. So I assumed that he hadn't heard or saw exactly what was happening, only noticing the commotion in his rear mirror and seeing me knock Karen down after snatching the phone from her grasp. So he says, Sir, return that device at once and leave the premises, or I will be forced to call the pull." Before he can even finish the sentence, the entire bus explodes with several other passengers speaking up at once, defending my case and telling the driver what had actually happened. The driver held up his hand, backed up, and tried to get everyone to calm down, which took quite a while, especially because the Karen kept screaming that she was going to have me arrested, that she was going to sue me, that she was going to press charges, etc. Once everything finally calms down, I begin to speak. However, the Karen interjects with, Sir, he stole my phone from me. I demand to have this, insert racial slur, arrested. The driver replies, Ma'am, please don't use that language here. He looks like he's about to say something else, but I sigh and hold up my hand, and in the most calm voice I can muster in the moment, reply, Sir, this phone is mine. If you will allow me, I will unlock it. I hold up the phone. It's got an anime wallpaper on it, certainly not something middle-aged women with children would have. I type in the password and the screen is unlocked. The Karen starts screeching again. He saw me type in my password. That's how he knows. Lady, a clearly annoyed man in the back speaks up in a booming voice. There are cameras on the bus. Everything is recorded. At the mention of cameras, she turns white as a sheet. Then, without skipping a beat, she drags her crying son to the back door and begins pounding on it, demanding that she be let out, all while screaming obscenities and threatening that she's going to sue, that she's going to file the complaint with transit, blah blah blah. That wasn't even it. In the commotion, despite threatening to by the Karen, someone had actually called the cops. Right on cue. So, two officers roll up to the bus with flashing lights. The Karen throws herself at the officers as they're let in and starts spinning some sob story when she's cut off at once by a very annoyed police officer. This was something like 8 at night and was probably nearing the end of his shift or something because he had an expression like he was absolutely done. Long story short, the bus was halted for something like an hour and 45 minutes. A second one pulled up which all the other passengers filed off into, not before giving a witness's statement, the camera feed was pulled and Karen was placed into the back of a cruiser after she slapped a police officer. One says that they arrived because there was a report of someone being assaulted on public transport. The police get my contact information, my ID, etc. and tells me that they'll contact me if anything else needs to be done. I have no idea what happened to the kid because I didn't stick around for the aftermath and just wanted to get the heck out of there. The worst part? My parents, who were always displeased with me coming at home late, unfortunately did not believe my story. They thought it was an excuse. So after hearing that story, is it wrong of me and is it outlandish for me to say she should not be a parent? Somebody who was acting like that in public, being a literal menace, not caring about other people? She should not be in charge of raising, shaping, or even trying to keep alive another human. Snooping Feline wrote, This goes beyond entitled parents and veers into mental illness? Probably both? I would have found it hard not to smack her and boot that brat 50 yards away. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, my parents are thinking I'm addicted to screens when I'm not. 
So for some backstory basically, my mom and stepdad hate games and all of that and are absolute control freaks and I play games just to talk to friends I can't see much. Now what took place recently is that out of the blue one day, they decided to take me to a neurologist even though I had lectures. And they told me the college wanted me to go there even though I didn't buy the story at all. And then when we got there I asked, why is the college making me do this again? And they said they didn't at all make me go here and that's when I knew something was up since the info they were telling me was going against one another. And I said, I thought the college told me to go here. And then the neurologist walked in and called for me and after doing some tests and everything, it turns out it was all about my screens the whole time, even though I'm hardly even on them. And next thing I know, I'm having everything taken, and the next thing I know, I can't see my friends for two months, and then I get my stuff back, and I'm getting my Wi-Fi, which I pay for, being restricted, along with my TV being restricted, by a weird wood box thing that the TV cord leads to, and I figure out that the box controls the power to the TV, and the only way I can get the TV cord out of the box is with a Phillips head screwdriver, which I don't have, and I don't live on campus since I just don't like how small it is in the dorms. So I live at home for now, but when I get back from college for the weekend, I notice all my electronics, except for my phone and laptop, are missing, since I had my phone and laptop with me. And I go to ask where the heck my stuff is, and they tell me to look in the office. And there's all my stuff all plugged in, and I ask why the heck my stuff was moved, and they say because I was on it last night, even though I definitely wasn't for a fact. And I say bull, and they can even check my profile on Steam to see when I was last on, since I have two accounts I play on, and I was on one the other day, and they said that I was lying, and that my stuff isn't going back in my room, no matter what. So now I can't even have any privacy anymore, it seems. I hate my parents. Like, I get it, limiting screen time is good for kids growing up, but when you're college age and you're old enough to be able to make that decision for yourself, it's pretty ridiculous, and once OP is able to move out on their own, hopefully assuming they're going to be able to at some point, that's just how you have kids who make sure they keep their distance. Shadow Fox wrote, Maybe it's better to move into the dorms? Seems like your parents think your grades could be better as that's the usual excuse they give. Time to do some PC games instead. Don't they understand most college work is on a laptop and need internet? Our next story is Burnt Out 22. I live with my grandparents and they refuse to use AC in scorching Texas. It gets very hot in the house, 80 plus with 77% humidity. Yes, I'm trying to move out, something I can't afford right now. I do fully support myself, aka full-time job and help with bills, buy all my own groceries, etc., but it does greatly affect my health in these conditions. My grandparents are in their 70s. My grandma has a range of health problems from COPD, asthma, and a heart condition. She states since she's an old lady with health problems, she gets what she wants in this house. She is cold all the time, even when it's over 100 outside. The house gets up to 81 degrees with a humidity of 77%. It gets even hotter when I try to cook. Kitchen reads at 83 degrees with 77% plus humidity. I have offered to pay the entirety of the electricity bill each month so we can have a bit of AC, but they won't allow me to pay for it. They said no AC allowed, no fans allowed, including ceiling fan, and no windows to be opened, no airflow or movement whatsoever in the house ever. Any chocolate, candy, etc. melts within hours once you bring it into the kitchen. Literally brought some chocolate donuts home from Walmart one day, and within hours the frosting had completely melted off of them and slid off the donuts and was just a big pool of frosting in the box. That's legit not normal indoors. I do try to turn it on when they leave to go to the store or out to eat, etc. That's maybe once a week or so. I only put it on 76 or 77, so not even crazy low. But when they get home, she somehow is able to tell if the AC's been on, even when I turn it back off before they get home. And she'll walk in the door and freak and start saying, Did you turn on the AC? I told you no AC is allowed in this house. And then threatens to kick me out to the streets because I turned on the AC. She said no one uses AC like this. I told her literally yes they do, especially in Texas. Everyone runs AC, but she claims people don't use it though she's been complaining that her pastor turns on the AC in church, and she said she was going to ask him if he can start turning it off for her and not use it. She also likes to have all the blinds open in the entire house, so the sun just beams in all day long. 
to the point even the kitchen table will be hot to the touch from the sun beaming on it. She doesn't allow for windows to be open either. She said it makes her asthma act up. I have a thermometer I purchased to monitor the temp and humidity in the house. It gets dangerously hot. I've tried showing her articles that this type of temperature and humidity in the house can cause mold to grow and actually can cause effects slash worsen her breathing conditions. But she said she doesn't care and it's not true. I understand her conditions and medication may make her cold, but she refuses to put on a coat, sweater, etc. And instead just refuses to use any AC. Ironically, in the winter, she blasts the heater non-stop. Runs about every 15 minutes on 80 degrees. Air gets so dry I have very bad nosebleeds. But in summer, she starts to say she can't afford air conditioning. I offer to pay the electricity bill. She refuses. She said she's not going to allow me to control the house and that no AC is allowed in this household. I tell her it's funny she has heater money all winter but no AC money. The humidity in the house also causes the sewer to smell. It's septic tank here, and the hotter it gets outside and the hotter it is in the house, the bathroom reeks of poo. It also affects my health from constantly sweating. Last year I finally bought an AC unit to place in my room. They didn't want me to get one, but I now work from home full time, and there was no way I can sit in this house all day working in these conditions. I have very bad body acne, in which I have tried every body wash trying to clear it up, but it doesn't. I also get boils from sweating constantly. It's extremely embarrassing. I also tend to get lightheaded and I do try to stay hydrated, but from sweating so much, it's hard. It's also affected my weight, as it's almost impossible to cook, because turning the oven on makes it 10 times hotter. I have gained so much weight since working from home the last year. Cooking on the stove, I literally will have sweat dripping into my eyeballs, sweat dripping down my back and my shirt ends up wet with sweat. Even sitting at the kitchen table to eat is almost unbearable, especially with the sun beaming in. Therefore, I eat fast food mostly every day during the summer, which has caused me to gain a ton of weight. I do try to cook in my air fryer, but she gets super mad when I get it out, because she says it's too big and bulky. She complains that I'm gaining weight and says that I need to eat healthier. Yeah, I would love to but I literally can't because of her. I love to cook and wish I could, but I literally start to feel physically ill when cooking because of how hot the kitchen gets. My grandpa, her husband of 47 years, says since she has health problems, we do as she says. He said they both grew up without air conditioning so it's not needed. I worry for all our health, even the dog's health. She is always convinced that the dog is cold and will put his winter sweater on him when he goes outside and it'll be in the upper 70s outside. She said the dog is a lot like her and stays cold. I told her literally no he's not. When family comes to visit, they tell her it's hot, but her response always is, she feels fine. She says if people don't like it, then they can just not come visit then. I've had some friends come over who literally end up leaving because it's so hot, they can't take it. Anyways, I guess I'm just here to vent and just hope I can move out in the near future. I definitely think grandma here has some actual medical issues going on. I live in a climate where you almost always want to have AC going. And in plenty of places in Texas, I can totally understand, you know, it's 80 degrees with 70 plus humidity. Ideally, you would probably want at least like low to mid 70s. I legitimately think if I were an OP situation, I would probably end up getting myself kicked out of there and I would make it my life's mission to move out because when I'm frustrated and I'm overheated and there's no way to cool down, I think I would just be prone to blowing up. Shadow Fox wrote, Old people can feel cold. It's due to them having bad circulation issues. Just run an AC unit in your room and stay more in your room. Sucks, but at this point she won't change her mind. It could also be a tactic to make sure you move out. Our next story is, mom thinks I owe her my time and can read minds. Let's start with saying that I have autism and ADHD, both diagnosed by professionals, and the ADHD part was re-evaluated three times, and the autism was confirmed after I demanded a second opinion. I am no contact with my dad, he is a diagnosed narcissist. However, I had a regular contact with my mom before I got pregnant in the fall of 2021. Since we, my partner and I, have gone low contact. My mom loves talking about how she raised us since I got pregnant. Like how I, at three and a half, while she was resting from surgery, 
aesthetic, she had my grandmother take us to daycare for four weeks and how in week two, I gave my grandmother the tricks of how my mom wrangled my brothers who would take off their snow gears while the other was getting dressed. Two-year-old twins. The trick was dressing me first and putting me on the balcony in a high crime area of town, closing the door behind me to not let the cold air in, dressing one of the boys, putting him on the balcony for me to watch, and taking care of the other before putting him on the balcony too, dressing herself, and taking them down the three flights of stairs which didn't have child safety gates to the car with me following. She reminds me every few months to this day how her and my grandmother were disappointed in me and resentful for not telling my grandmother sooner, or when she took us to get our pictures taken at Sears and we were being toddlers. I think I was five, touching everything and me randomly screaming, a stim I used to have when I was overwhelmed. She kept telling us to sit and be quiet but we wouldn't do it, so after 15 minutes, she said she lost patience left the photographer's waiting area, took us to the parking where she proceeded to hit us bare bottom one after the other until she was certain we would remember the punishment for days to come. She confirmed it was about us feeling the pain for days. She laughs about how painful her hands were and how she had feared at the time that someone would call my country's equivalent of CPS on her. She laughs even harder remembering that when my dad asked how our day went, I allegedly said, we got a lot of slaps and no pictures. She is proud to say that when we went back the next day, we were the picture-perfect kids, and how many compliments she got on how her good behavior, or how often she beat my brother's butt until it bruised for climbing furniture, or how I would make myself severely sick to not eat the food she cooked. I have sensory issues. So many more stories of me either being parentified, including leaving me alone for four months with my brothers when I was 15. I had to pay for groceries for all three of us with my own money, or me and my siblings being abused. It terrifies me that she could do something similar to my son because she is not at all regretting her actions, but she thinks they're funny stories from our childhood, including denying us food for days on end. In the last few years, my mental health has been very poor. Medication is difficult due to allergies and side effects, and therapy takes the time it needs, but I am better. So in the last few weeks, my ergotherapist has put a plan in place to help me regain more independence, energy, and physical wellness. It's hard, takes 4-8 to eight hours a day, and I am exhausted by the end of it. My psychologist is all for it. My partner is 100% behind me, encouraging me, helping where he can. It's going well, but because of it, I haven't been very social. I don't reach out to anyone, I'm in bed by 9 every night at the latest. My mom never reaches out first, but apparently she didn't like that I didn't answer her text at 11.41 last night, so she called today at noon. At first it was just small talk, how am I, blah blah blah. I remind her that I'm doing the ergo plan to get me back on track, she brushed it off. No surprise, she doesn't believe that my mental health is poor, hers is worse and she doesn't get or need that much help. Good for her, but she hasn't worked a day in over 20 years, lives on disability, and I've done all the hard things for her until I gave birth, and even a few days after, including playing armchair psychologist. While I wanted to get back in the workforce and get better, where I'll need minimal help in my day-to-day -day life. So she tells me about how she had to cook that ham she got for Easter that I didn't come and eat with her. My son had a respiratory infection severe enough that we could barely keep his asthma in check. We had packed a go bag just in case we needed to take him to the hospital again. She lives an hour away by car, or an hour and 20 minutes away from the children's hospital. Why she didn't keep the ham in her freezer a bit longer, I don't know, but it apparently needed to be cooked today. She proceeded to ask me to come get what she wouldn't eat. I reminded her that my husband has the car at work and that I'm doing my plan. Plus, using transits, she's at least two hours away, and that's if all the bus transfers are perfect, and I don't need to wait more than 10 minutes between them. I don't have the time or energy to do this, so I tell her sorry, it's not possible. She then said that it's okay, she would just bin all the food. At this point, I'm drained and say that I don't know what she wants me to say. She says, wow, call me when you want to see me, and hung up. Three minutes later, I get a text from her that I'll translate for you guys. You know, I have little things for my son. You could have just told me that I could have come for a little while. Bye. She never comes to my house. She never offers to make my life easier by doing anything for me. 
She never hinted at the fact that she would be willing to come. She knows I don't get social clues or nice actions. She knows I don't read minds and that I'm very bad at guessing what people want from me. She is so passive aggressive, always has been if I'm honest, but it's getting worse. She's ticked when I don't make her a priority. She's ticked I don't let her babysit my son. Well, she says her son, like I'm just the incubator who keeps the toddler until she wants him. She's not allowed unsupervised near my child. She's ticked when I let other people babysit him. She's ticked when I don't call her every day. She's ticked when I don't take care of things for her. Despite knowing that to prioritize her, I was living a very unhealthy life. My needs are always last. She started doing the same to my husband, and it bothered me when I realized it, but it still didn't really click. It really started to click how entitled she was with my time and resources when I was pregnant. I had a very high risk pregnancy due to a lot of complications and the whole time she kept saying she didn't understand why I had so little energy or why I was so sick because when she was pregnant with me, insert whatever she did, felt or how she acted. It clicked when a week after I gave birth, despite her having been there for the birth after she insisted she wanted me to visit her and that she was disappointed that I said no to go back to the hospital to treat my son's severe jaundice instead, you could have just come for an hour or so and delay by four hours my son's treatment? It clicked when she wanted me to bring my son to her so she could cuddle my child, but be of no other help. It clicked when she kept telling me to stop pumping milk and just buy formula for him. It would be easiest when my son needed a very specific, very expensive formula. Formula we couldn't really afford. Well, I didn't breastfeed any of you and you turned out fine. But today, it's so evident how entitled she is. How, without asking, she expected me to drop everything and go to her for food. And how I should have just guessed that I should tell her to visit when she never does. Even when offered, she never comes. But today, I should have guessed that she would. My partner reminds me that no, I can't read minds and no, I couldn't have guessed. But he's at work and i'm overwhelmed tired and defeated i feel like i'm asking too much to want just one parent in my corner i think it's why i still have any contact with her i feel sad i needed to vent if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask honestly the only question i have is why they still continue to put up with that i'm just wondering what the breaking point is for op where they realize you know what this isn't worth it You know, send a text where you lay out how exactly you feel, how exactly you feel they've let you down, and how, unless their next reply is an apology and how they want to try to do better, that you won't be replying or something like that. I mean, really, how much more is worth it? I think OP's only still going on just because of all the years of being parentified and conditioned. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Entitled Parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.